We are now into week three of our sermon series, Do Not Believe Everything You Think. Week one, we were challenged to rethink our choices. Week two is a meeting of the minds, God's eternal mind and our little minds and how they meet. Today, all our readings are in our faith. God is telling us today, change your mind. We have to change our minds. Now, we change our minds all the time. When you think about it, we wake up in the morning and say, well, I will go to the store today. But later on, we say, well, I'm not going to go to the store today. We do this in little matters. We do this in big matters as well. Like, uh, you know, I want to be an engineer when I grow up. And we change our minds, right? Always change our minds. But we never really change our mind easily when someone tells us to change our mind. Have you noticed that? Now, I have a lot of brothers and sisters here who were born and raised in Pittsburgh. Okay. Brother Thomas was born and raised in Pittsburgh. And if you're born and raised in Pittsburgh, you are a Steelers fan. And even if you come here and live, you are still a Steelers fan. And if someone would tell you, Brother Thomas, you must become a Ravens fan, what would you do? <laughs> you see, when we identify with a, a team or sports team and they're part of who we are we can't just say okay I'll change my mind you know <laughs> especially when someone tells us to do that but today in our readings God is telling us to change our mind in Ezekiel the people were saying to the prophet to God saying God's ways are not just in other words God, you have to change your mind. And God said, hmm, is that so? You have to change your mind. And he lists all the things that they were doing, which are just wrong and unjust. Someone's got to change their mind, and it's not going to be God. Today, in our gospel, we have a story that Jesus presents to his antagonist the Pharisee. He said, what do you think? We have two men. No, we have a man with two sons. And he said to the first, go out in the field and work today. I need you to be out there. And he said, no, I'm not going to go. Now, why did he say, no, I'm not going to go? I don't know. But later he did. Why did he do it later? We don't know. And then he comes to the other son and he says, go out in the field. And he says, sure, I'll go. But he never goes. Why did he say, sure, I'll go? And why is it that he didn't go? I don't know. But one thing is for certain, God is expecting both of them to change their mind. Now, in the context of the parable, the first represent all the outcasts of society, like tax collectors and prostitutes. God comes to them and says, come to me, work in my, come into the kingdom of God. They say, no, I'm not going there. But they do. They have a, they have a repent, and they come. And the son who says yes, I'll go. Are they religious? Elite. They're the ones that come to mass all the time. <laughs> and they say, Yeah, I'm here. But in reality, do they really come to Jesus? We have to change our minds, and this is harder to do. It is harder to do than, than for a Steelers fan to become a Ravens fan, okay? Because our identity is wrapped up in ourselves. We want to do what we want to do. 
And we are not going to change our minds except for the help of God. Now, what does it look like to change our minds? Well, in our Philippians reading, we see what that looks like. Paul just brings it all out. If there's any consolation in Christ, if there's any comfort in love, if there's any fellowship in the Spirit, if there's any, like, anything that's good, be of this mind. He's, he's inviting us to be in the mind of Christ. Don't do anything out of envy and strife, but have this mind. Having one accord. And what does it look like? It says, esteeming others better than ourselves. Whoa. Who is there in your life right now that you need to esteem more than yourself? I'll tell you who it is. Everyone. Can you change your mind? Placing others before yourself. Have this mind that is in you, as was in Christ Jesus, who, although he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he made himself of no repute. He emptied himself. He made himself a self-sacrifice for the world. He gifted himself to everyone around him. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm preaching to myself. I have to change my mind. And whenever I think of Christ, I have to change my mind to be conformed to his mind. Oh my goodness, look at our nation. Everybody believes what they think. Everyone has an opinion. It, it's like everybody's willing to die for that opinion. And what is God telling us all? He is telling us to change our mind. It's not a political thing. It's not this or that. It is a divine thing. It is Jesus Christ. And that will be our gift to our culture. Our gift to our time if we can change our mind. To the mind of Christ. Don't believe everything you think. Change your mind.